Hey there, colors out there. Welcome back to another episode of Tips and Tricks. Uh, this episode we're going to be talking about uh, anatomy. And I know for a lot of people out there, it's it's easy to say, like, oh, I can't draw. Uh, I'm going to be an inker, or I'm going to be a colorist, or I'm going to be a letterer, or something like that. And a lot of things, uh, a lot of people don't understand is that each of those uh, takes a certain skill set. And it's not just plopping down color or slapping down some ink or typing out some some uh, some words and putting a balloon around it. Each one, I, I think, should be studied individually, and uh, you know, to get the best results. If you're going to do something, might as well do it do it well. Um, so, as far as coloring uh, and anatomy. Um, even though a lot of your knowledge will mainly focus on color but you're also going to need to know anatomy in order to uh, help portray features accurately and know where your shadows are and how to, how to show those realistically. Um, this, what we're looking at here is from uh, um, Andrew Loomis. Uh, of all the books that I've read on anatomy, I think his are by far the easiest to understand. And he's a phenomenal artist. Um, for the longest time, his books were out of print. But uh, I think over the last year or so, um, somebody had this smart idea of, hey, let's go ahead and, and put these back on the market. Uh, this particular uh, page I scanned in from the Drawing the Heads and Hands. I'll put the link to uh, to the book on, on Amazon in the description so you guys can check it out. Um, it's not too expensive, and it's money well worth it. Um, so let's go ahead and look at what he has going on here. Uh, it's just basic stuff. Instead of breaking it down into uh, here's the head, you know, we're just looking at basic shapes of of the head, and it, it makes it a lot easier uh, to imagine it uh, and to to remember it as you're going. Um, so we see, you know, here's like the basic breakdown right here. You have your eye sockets, the sides of the nose, the bridge of the nose, underneath the nose. Here's your chin. Uh, your cheekbones will cut in right here. And then the, the sides of the face, the ears, and uh, the shape of the head. Here he gets a little bit more, a little bit more into it, you, you know, breaking the forehead down into uh, a couple other planes. Um, so you can see that going on. Um, what I'm going to do to help illustrate a little bit more um, how I really uh, learn things a lot is having somebody illustrate it, you know, so I can see it for myself. Um, so that's what that's what we'll do real quick. Um, I think so. I have like this base color here, and I think uh, just two other colors will do it for us. Uh, we'll use that as the darkest shadow, and. We'll go with the lighter shade first, so we can do that. I'm just doing this really quickly. Um, do this area here. I'm going to do that for the bags underneath the eyes. Uh, bottom lip. Let this be darker. One of the the nice things to you know why you want to take the time to learn anatomy is you can do a lot of uh, amazing uh, things with it. Let's see, we'll get this part. I mean, as far as the uh, dynamic lighting and getting a lot of mood going on, stuff like that, and we'll get into that in uh, a later episode. Just want to uh, talk about the basics first before we go a little bit deeper in it. All right, so we have our. Uh, have our highlights 
let's go in with the with the mid tone now. This will be mm, actually this part can be a shadow. I won't do that. Yeah, that looks good. And again, every uh, lighting scenario is going to be a little bit different, but these are just the uh, the basics of it. You do that. Uh, this part. Here, this guy here looks a little bit different. Guess I should have done a cleaner scan. Yeah, all right, well, you get the gist of it. Uh, we could do this part of his neck as well or yeah just still a drop shadow from his head and then there we go and then um, go a shade darker than our base as well to really so show some of the, the uh, shadows These are going to be the darkest areas of all. A little bit from the hair. Of course, if your character is bald, you're not going to have that uh, inside the ear. So, yeah. So we have the basic planes broken down. Uh, we could even do it with this guy. Uh, let's do... Of course, this this one here is with the uh, light source. Oops, got that layer locked. Uh, coming straight down. Let's say we want to do the lighting coming from in front of them. On this one, we could do that because we know the basic planes. That's not going to be uh, any, any problem to do that. Uh, so we'll go like this. We'll have this area be darker. It takes a lot of the uh, the guesswork out of it. A balance shadow. It'll be darkest. Here will be light. I'm going to drop shadow from the ear. This part here will be dark. That. Let's do some highlights. This guy. This guy. Oops. Ah. Again, just doing this uh, really quickly. Uh, see, it may not look the look the cleanest or anything. So we do all that dark. 
changing that. Uh, this part will be light. That part. Like uh, the parts you want to do, like in you know, show in and on a gradient with the you know dark, medium, light. Uh, that could all change too, depending on how bright the the light source is going to be. Um, let's see this part right here. It'll be like that. So the reason why I had this part here very dark was just to have this uh, rim light part. So I mean, we can even make it more dramatic, making this all dark, having the lightest lights against the the darkest darks, will bring in that drama nicely. But uh, I think that looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, you can see how it makes it so much easier uh, to do the planes. Um, now, for a practical use, um, I have. Oops. Uh, Daredevil pinup done by Jeremy Dale. Um, this is an older piece he did. I found it on DeviantArt, which I thought would work very nicely uh, for this demonstration. I think I'll use it for a couple other tutorials I have I have in mind for you guys. Um, but just to kind of show this in and real, you know, in action, real work coloring style or whatever. Um, I'll go ahead and copy that because I have uh, the line art. Let's paste it on top of uh, Daredevil here. And of course, it's not going to fit perfectly, but you know you'll see the you'll see the planes there. Oops. Let me copy that a couple times that way you can see it nicely. I just kind of fit it on to uh, loosely fit it onto his head as much as I can here. So we kind of see. You know how, how, how this is going to work, the, the planes of the face. Um, let's see. So we're going to have this plane here. I'll kind of sketch it out for you real quick before I uh, actually color it. Um, so we're going to have a plane here. We'll highlight on the nose here. Uh, let me move this over a little bit so that the nose lines up a little bit better. Uh, we'll have this plane here. I'll go to here as well. And then that's the uh, the lip. And then we'll have this here for the chin. And then. Uh, Move this around a little bit more again, so it lines up a little bit better. That looks all right. Okay, and now next we'll have be a little bit brighter. We'll have coming from Sorry, I just kind of got lost a little bit. Um, from his eyes, we'll have this part. will come down. And we'll kind of go around to the back of his head. You probably won't see that as much because he has like such a, a nice rim light going on. Uh, this part, we'll go back here and then forward, which we're kind of seeing uh, this part here in the drawing or in the uh, the layout thing from Loomis. Um, it's a little bit highlight there on the ear. So let's take that off and we could see you know how nicely the uh, the planes are breaking down on here. Then we get a little bit of highlight on that as well. So it's going to be the top lip. Oh, let me do that. 
that helps. So a little adjustments here and there, but you can see how much just that basic uh, quick sketching, how, how much that uh, that helps uh, define, you know, the anatomy of his face. Um, so we got that. So let's go ahead and uh, let me clean that up for you guys. You can see, like in this piece of light source coming from above. That's why I kind of have it lit like a daytime scene. All right, so Make sure I got the right brush here. Again, just using a regular uh, soft brush. Um, I get it in your palette. It's one of these uh, 300. It's just regular soft brush. Comes with Photoshop. Nothing special. It's all in how you use it. Uh, so yeah, just kind of building these up a little bit more, and then start uh, adding the highlights. We had again. We had the uh, the planes kind of showing us where those are going to be. So I'm just kind of breaking them in a little bit more. I have the my skin tone selection on a separate layer, and I have uh, that layer locked. That's how I'm able to just do my selections wherever I want. Uh, makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about uh, being too too neat and clean about it. And the what I found is like the faster you do your selections, the more uh, uh, what's the word? More confident your your coloring looks. So if somebody's spending so much, uh, a long time, you know, making like a real perfect selection, uh, you could tell they've uh, they've been working on the piece for a long time. Uh, now maybe what I'll do here. Uh, maybe introduce like a little bit of this blue from the sky and that, that'll just add uh, a little bit of interest to the shadows not like, gonna do like a whole lot but you know just a tad really helps all right so I got that maybe I'll play around with the levels a little bit I'm kind of digging that and Want to do a little bit more, uh, play with the shadows a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to my shadows, my cut, and my color, color balance. If I could talk, uh, introduce uh, some purple. Oh, that's not my sky. Uh, so here's. I'm on the highlights, just adding a little bit more yellow to the scene, warm it up pretty nicely. Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> Sorry, I'm at work recording this, and uh, yeah, I guess some people don't turn off their computers when they go home. But uh, now let's go ahead and uh, take care of the the head on this of the suit. Oops. Got that. Um, there you go. We'll go ahead and. Uh, Merge down like the skin tones I had on a separate layer. Go ahead and merge that uh, merge that down. Let me just figure out what I was doing. Hold on. Okay, got that. Okay, merge that down. Let me clean that up. Okay. Now I'm back on track. Uh, actually, let me go back, clean up this nose a little bit. I don't like it. Blend it a little bit more. 
Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And one thing I always do, I always like to zoom out so I can take a better look at it. Uh, you know, it's, you look at it like this all day long, you're not you're not really going to have like a, a, a nice objective view of it. So I always like to zoom out and get a better look. Uh, so, oh yeah, his uh, outfit. Uh, let me darken that up. Oops, not you. You. Darken it up, some saturation, maybe add a little bit of, uh, a little bit of blue to it. Now we're there, when I go back in uh, uh, with the reds, it'll really pop out nice. So, let's get rid of this guy. So I got my reds selected. I'm going to put it on its own layer and then lock it down. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, it looks good. A little bit brighter. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I've got the horns going. And again, our light source is coming from up on top. So we're keeping that in mind. Uh, Again, we're going to be looking at the at the planes. We already kind of sketched it out, so we know roughly what we want to do. Oops. So we know this part is going to go like that. We deselect the horn so I don't actually recolor over it. I should have saved that for later. So we'll get his brow. See where was that cheek? So it comes out a little bit and then down. Okay, I think we got that. Goes out and then down. We'll just tie it in with this line to help sell it some more. I'm gonna get this part of the nose. That looks good. Um, can introduce a little bit of the cheekbone here. Just really slight. I think that looks good. Blend that in a little bit better. Now we can go in. Um, I'm gonna do the rest of his. Uh, his neck and everything else, but uh, yeah, I'll leave that up to you guys to to research it. When I get the chance, I'll go ahead and, and uh, finish rendering him out. Um, sorry, getting caught up in the moment here. So it's points like this. Like I was saying, it's really helpful to learn. The anatomy and oh, okay, this this here is this muscle. This is this is what it's shaped like, and this is how it looks. You know, when the light is hitting it from this direction, it is really important. And it seems like a lot of a lot of colors when they first start uh, don't put the thought into it, and it's just like oh, okay, um, Superman's cape is red, so here you go, it's red. 
you know, not, not really worrying about what a fold really looks like uh, when it's blowing in the wind or, or whatever. And, oh, um, yeah, I, I know that. Cause, I mean, that's, that's how I was when I first started. Uh, oops. Let me get my red back. All right, well, that's all I'm going to do on that part for now. Um, well, one more. I, I just love doing the rim lighting. So I'm going to do this real quick. That's going to help reinforce where my light's coming from. That's going to be just red, red, red. All right, all right, now I'll stop, I'll stop. Um, one thing we could do as well, let me put this on another layer just in case I don't like it. Um, kind of do like we did with the skin tone, so just kind of introduce a little bit of the, a little bit of blue to it, uh, to this red here. So we have like a, just a taste of the uh, reflected light from the sky. A real subtle. I think it looks all right. We're just erasing to that a little bit. Oops, where's my eraser at? No. Let me get a soft eraser at 30%. Okay, yeah, you can see that. It's just real, real subtle. Um, so yeah, I think we'll leave it there for now. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll just leave it here for now, and um, pick it, pick up. Hopefully next time, uh, I'm gonna do something with this piece uh, for the texture. I want to do textures, uh, a couple other things um, that I'll use this piece for to show you. Um, no, I'll have more of the coloring done at that point. Um, yeah, sorry, last week I wasn't able to get a video out. Work's been really hectic, and then all my freelance projects are are all uh, deadlines all at the same time. But um, hopefully I should get these out uh, uh, more often. But yeah, definitely uh, just because your craft is coloring doesn't mean you shouldn't know all the other aspects of uh, comic book work. The more you understand the penciling stage, the more you understand the... Uh, uh, the inking, or sometimes even even the lettering, it's very helpful. Um, uh, as far as what each one <laughs> helps helps complement each other, and even it's I think it's important as well for say like the pencilers or inkers to know a little bit about the color as well, the coloring process. Doesn't mean you have to go out and color books professionally, but just be aware of what it entails. And uh, that way you kind of understand where the other people are coming from as you're, as you're doing your job uh, to help make your job easier, help, help make the other people look better. Um, yeah, um, I, always, I always tell uh, uh, people that I'm teaching, uh, if, if you stop learning, no matter how long you've been, you've been at your craft, uh, you know, even how long you've been a professional or whatever, if you're not continuing to learn, then at that point is when you just start to suck. Because at that point, everybody else is going to continue to learn, and you're you're just stuck at where you're at. You're never going to get any better. So it's always it's always important to continue learning uh, new things. Um, you know, not just about color, like I said, about anatomy. It'll help. It'll you'll be able to pull from all these different sources into your craft um, you know don't just look at comic books for coloring look at paintings look at look at real life uh, as you're stuck in traffic you know look at the reflections on how they hit on cars and you, you take that and you pull that into a comic book setting and it's just gonna look, make your work look so much more amazing than the next guy so it's always important to keep on learning uh, reading books on, on painters going to museums uh, you know reading anatomy books what have you uh, you know, wherever you can pull knowledge from. Uh, and I think with that, I'm going to end it here. Uh, thanks for watching and welcome to all, all the new subscribers. We've been getting quite a lot lately and it means the world to me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, 
If you guys like what you see, um, you know, feel free to to leave a like. It really helps me a lot uh, by pushing. YouTube pushes will push my videos more if they get more likes, and that'll get us more viewers and everything. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. If you want to see more of my color work, go to uh, lumage.deviantart.com. And that's about it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. All right, bye.